up with what's going on. Thank you so much for your info. Yeah, it's quite lovely. Have a good time. We are. She's doing a selfie shot with a ball. <laughs> All right. That was that was fun. Luck of the Irish. He gave me a coin. I can give somebody and everyone now a great, great technique which will all help them in their daily uh, transformation. The first thing we all have to know is life is very, very simple. So there, there are just, there, there's one thing we all have to know. We are here to love the divine with all of our heart, serve selflessly, and to be all we can be. And it's as simple as that. Now, a great technique for everyone listening is to learn the art of disconnect on a daily basis. That color is blue, sapphire blue. That is your throat, your truth chakra. So if you breathe in, as I told you, through the sapphire blue, through the root and the crown, mix it in your heart. And then what you do is create a blue tornado in a counterclockwise direction going from top to bottom and you give the intent. You can even make the sign of the cross, which is a sign of disconnect. It has nothing to do with Christianity. And teach me your path, show me your ways, and guide me in your truth. For you are the supreme God, my mother, father, 
and I am one with you in divine faith and truth every divine and infinite moment long. And that will disconnect you and ask to be disconnected from all negativity, past, present, and future. A conscious decision, a conscious decision, a conscious decision. It's a good deal for everyone. The universe loves making deals. So as we said, the universe is constantly inviting us all to step on the beam and come along and make the journey with it. Uh, the higher you go, the more spirit, the more joy and uh, positive spirit you take into you, the more immune you will be to the slings and arrows of the daily earthly life. When we, when we clean our soul and breathe, breathe the violet energy into your heart through the root and crown, mix it in your heart and bring it into your solar plexus. You take all of that energy in your solar and the easiest way is to condense it. And then you can transmute it and disintegrate it in the violet flame. Then once you've done that, you can breathe all the golden joy energy that you would like in and then keep filling the solar. And it also helps when you breathe the golden joy energy into your heart. And if you want to give yourself Shakti pot, you don't need the guru from the east. You can breathe in the red, the color for Shakti pot, which everyone can do on a daily basis. And this is the ultimate alchemy for the soul. You breathe in red and orange, mix it in your heart, and then you shoot the energy back down to your um, kundalini on the back of your soul. Your sex chakra is the front, your kundalini is the back. You can also throw yellow golden joy in that. You can throw golden uh, divine light as close as you can to the earthly gold. And at the same time, when you're shooting that energy down in the back, you you shoot the energy out and give it back to the world and uh, meaning Mother Earth and humanity as well. And that will make that will make this formulation stronger because you're doing both at the same time. So when you are sending the energy from your heart back down to the bottom of your spine, you also send it at the same time in just straight to Mother Earth and humanity. And that will make that will make the whole uh, prayer and your personal experience stronger. Let's talk about about spiritual transmutations and this almost anyone who's ever heard the word alchemy is familiar with the idea of turning lead into gold though i think most people don't really see what's buried in that idea well anyone out there who wants to practice daily alchemy and turn lead into gold try cleaning and cleansing your solar plexus out of all the negativity just once a day on a daily basis and filling it with golden joy. And, and you, you will see what true alchemy is and you'll see how hard that is. But when you're able to clean out your solar plexus on a daily basis and you're able to fill that with the golden joy and abundance and also the back, the back of your soul chakra is your Kundalini. And you're able to shoot that with daily energy of chi and joy that that is true alchemy on a daily basis. And it's, it's anyone capable of giving yourself Shakti part in any moment, and you're capable of filling your solar plexus with the universal joy, the universal laughter on any moment. But you start out, start out and try it. And at the beginning, you will see what cleansing lead out of your, your psyche and your being is like. Sometimes it feels like to me the difference. Anyone out there who wants to practice daily alchemy and turn lead into gold, try cleaning and cleansing your solar plexus out of all the negativity just once a day on a daily basis 
and filling it with golden joy. And, and you, you will see what true alchemy is and you'll see how hard that is. Let's talk about spiritual transmutations and this, almost anyone who's ever heard the word alchemy is familiar with the idea of turning lead into gold. Though I think most people don't really see what's buried in that idea. Well, anyone out there who wants to practice daily alchemy and turn lead into gold Try cleaning and cleansing your solar plexus out of all the negativity just once a day on a daily basis and filling it with golden joy. And, and you, you will see what true alchemy is and you'll see how hard that is. But when you're able to clean out your solar plexus on a daily basis and you're able to fill that with the golden joy and abundance and also at the back, the back of your soul chakra is your kundalini and you're able to shoot that with daily energy of chi and joy, that, that is true alchemy on a daily basis. And it's, it's, anyone is capable of that. You're capable of giving yourself Shakti Park in any moment, and you're capable of filling your solar plexus with the universal joy, the universal laughter on any moment. But you start out, start out and try it. And at the beginning, you will see what cleansing led out of your, your psyche and your being is like. Uh, but anyone can do this uh, on a daily basis, which I recommend everybody do, because this is a very good uh, beginning point to bring more energy uh, into your whole being and to raise your own chi energy. And you need to do this by breathing into your heart. You take the orange energy from the crown and you take the red energy. It meets in your heart and... You say, I trade in my life for alchemical, spiritual, and divine rebirth and life. I am the joyful, perpetual, selfless service. And you give your name. And you say, I love my karma and my faith. And then you take that energy that is mixed in your heart. And if you're really good, uh, you can bless the earth at the same time. And then shoot it down at the very same time into your own kundalini. The second part of this is I serve selflessly. I love God with all of my heart and I am all I can be. This is what it is and infinitely more. And you can do that as the second part of the exercise. And the same thing, you can bless Mother Earth and shoot it into your Kundalini at the same time. One thing we do is as we leave the topic of spiritual alchemy, when you breathe in through your root, ruby red and then you breathe in through your crown the ray of infinity the ray of infinity is the impersonal aspect the male and the ruby red holy spirit through the root is the female that's perpetual help the personal part that cares about all of creation you bring it into your heart you mix it there and then you breathe Say, it out I bless Mother Earth and all humanity with the greatest blessings of all infinity. I bless Mother Earth and all humanity with the greatest blessings of all infinity. And that is an excellent starting point because it takes the energy through you. One thing we do is, as we leave the topic of spiritual alchemy, when you breathe in through your root, ruby red, and then you breathe in through your crown, the ray of infinity. The ray of infinity is the impersonal aspect, the male, and the ruby red Holy Spirit through the root is the female. That's perpetual help, the personal part that cares about all of creation. You bring it into your heart, you mix it there, and then you breathe it out. You get to be really good at this. Not only can you bless the energy out through your Heart into the world as it mixes, but you can also at the same time swirl it around and keep it in your own body. And that is, that's a little later on. So when we talk to the students who are just starting, uh, let the crown energy mingle in the heart with the energy from the root. And then we bless it into the world. These may the world, Mother Earth, and all humanity be blessed with the greatest blessings of all infinity. And in the East, when the gurus meditate, the, the very higher ups, all of the energy that you take into your body, you give back to the earth 
and to the world when you are finished with your meditation. Because the only things we take to heaven with us are the things that we give away. Now, this is spiritual and physical alchemy. In the beginning, we learn that to disconnect every day when you wake up, uh, you can disconnect from all negativity, past, present, and future. And you breathe in the blue flame, which is truth. That is your throat chakra. And you breathe that in through uh, the crown and through the root. And you use this meditation fragment which is a psalm and a prayer. I am your path, I am your ways, and I am your truth. And you are the supreme God, my mother, father, and I am one with you in truth and faith, every divine, eternal, and infinite moment long. And as you are finishing that, you want to picture, you make a blue counterclockwise tornado around you, you take the energy in your heart and you go downwards in a counterclockwise direction with the tornado and that will disconnect you from all negativity, past, present, and future. And then when you're finished with that, you breathe in the blue flame again through the root and through the crown. It meets in your heart and you invoke for divine protection, past, present, and future. And as you are finishing that, Take the excess energy, breathe out through your heart, and bless Mother Earth and all humanity with the same divine protection, past, present, and future. That to disconnect every day when you wake up, uh, you can disconnect from all negativity, past, present, and future. And you breathe in the blue flame, which is truth. That is your throat chakra. And you breathe that in through uh, the crown and through the root. And you use this meditation fragment, which is a psalm and a prayer. I am your path, I am your ways, and I am your truth. And you are the supreme God, my mother, father, and I am one with you in truth and faith, every divine, eternal, and infinite moment long. And as you are finishing that, you want to picture, you make a blue counterclockwise tornado around you, you take the energy in your heart and you go downwards in a counterclockwise direction with the tornado and that will disconnect you from all negativity, past, present, and future. And then when you're finished with that, you breathe in the blue flame again through the root and through the crown. It meets in your heart and you invoke for divine protection, past, present, and future. And as you are finishing that, Take the excess energy, breathe out through your heart, and bless Mother Earth and all humanity with the same divine protection, past, present, and future. take the orange energy from the crown and you take the red energy it meets in your heart and you say i trade in my life for alchemical spiritual and divine rebirth and life i am the joyful perpetual selfless service and you give your name Pray to it. well the greatest thing that we should do is live life without fear and uh, what we call dying, there is no death in the universe. There is only uh, spiritual and infinite rebirth and life. So when we are leaving this planet, even if we didn't finish our mission, do not go to fear, but go to joy uh, and meditation, even if it's for a few minutes of blessing the great life that you had here. And that will be very important because your last moments of life and how you say goodbye here are very, very important. So you say, if you say it with joy and that it was great experience and that you learned a great deal and you thank the universe and all the people that were around you and helped you and remember the great moments. 
But when your soul leaves the body, um, you do get choices. Uh, if you get scared and you go into the light, you get to come back to earth. So if you gravitate toward the light and you get scared, you will gravitate towards, you will come back to earth, the cycle. If you stay in the void and the darkness, that is where you truly get the chance to create. And if you don't become afraid and you just stay in the void and you create there, uh, and you'll have to know that before you leave your body because you will take that with you, that is when you get a chance to really, really create and go anywhere in the universe that you want. If you see the light and you choose not to go into the light, you can turn around and at that moment you should see all of creation and you can say, take me home and your soul will go back to the dimension it came from. Or if you invoke the name of your teacher, if it's Buddha, Muhammad, Krishna, um, Jesus, uh, that teacher will feel uh, compelled and come to you. And if he feels that you have finished your mission and you are worthy, he will take you into the sixth dimension, which is where the ascended masters like St. Germain and Merlin and uh, Mother Mary, Lady Nadia, and 150 other thousand masters are who watch over this planet. Uh, uh, so you do have choices if you know what you're doing when you die. And that is one of the greatest alchemical processes ever because at that moment you are back with pure spirit again. And you also get to make your choices of what you'd like to do. Uh, you have to be informed. So uh, there is one of uh, the greatest alchemical secrets that you can ever know when passing away. Uh, you have to be informed. So uh, there is one of uh, the greatest alchemical secrets that you can ever know when passing away. So these fractal realities, that's why, you know, God's fingerprints, in my opinion, the closest I feel to God is not listening to Jerry Falwell, you know, or even reading the Bible or reading the Quran. Okay. Like that me personally, the closest I get to seeing the fingerprints of God, and I'm not putting down religion at all. Like I understand how these books are a form of what I'm explaining right now. But it's when you see a repeated pattern that like just keeps growing until it's harmonically beautiful on a scale you can't imagine. And then you think, who did that? You think, who wrote that code? Who made that sound? Who created that relationship that then infinitely goes to like something you, can, you can't comprehend unless you look at like you can't understand the the honeycomb unless you understand the music of the bee's wings. Like that vibration and the behavior of the bee, the behavior of the ant, you see these structures building. And now you can blame the structure, but it's actually that behavior, that choice, that fractal. And these fractals breathe out and they breathe in. And right now we're at this unique time in history. It, you know, I'm sure it's happened other times. But as a fractal of deceit expands and, you, and these structures expand and then it stops its momentum and starts pulling back. And that's why you're seeing the burning of the liability shields. It's, it's these people, it's those people, it's this idea, it's this country, it's it, and it just keeps going down until you're left with the grain of the original fractal. What is that fractal? you can apply it to behavior. It's because you can look at the music up. When you look at the first grain of like, what is money? What is a family? What is uh, the public behavior for the most wealth creation? What is, so you're looking at the design of a civilization that when expanded leads to just more fruit, more beauty. And, and like, like when you look at this, um, this image, you can be in the same realm like you're looking at the same thing and two people see it completely different. The barren wasteland, the, the, the financial hardship of a child, the, 
versus the blessing from God of a child, right? The financial hardship of a child the, versus the blessing from God of a child, right? The financial hardship of a child the, versus the blessing from God of a child, right? hardship of a child the versus the blessing from God of a child, right? And you're right there in the same realm. And that's why this realm isn't as material as people think. And you're right there in the same realm. And that's why this realm isn't as material as people think. And that's why this realm isn't as material as people think. What is your role, your intention, your desire, your emotion? If everyone acted like you, what would the world be like? You understand? Keep it right, go right back to the source of the fractal. And that's your heart. It's your, the breath of life that was given to you by your creator. Your, the breath of life that was given to you by your creator. There, it's, it's not even a debate. When people are like, you know, the debate of God, it's like the fact you're debating means you're wrong. You exist. Who created it? The Coke Snowflake. So how do you spill the face, uh, fill the space with it? Yeah, so the pattern of four lines is the seed. Yeah, so the pattern of four lines is the seed. So when you copy it over and over again, you start seeing what comes from it. Grandmother would put the swastika every morning in front of the house with the, it's called a kolam. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a symbol. It actually, each point of it represents a very ancient Indian mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, which means I bow down to the divinity within me because it awesome. believes the kingdom of heaven is within you. Yeah. That's what that, that's what the swastika ultimately represents. But I, I think, uh, Owen, what you're saying is fascinating because there's this guy, Martin Sigelman, you know, this guy in no. the sixties, he discovered this thing that um, 
is called learned helplessness. Yeah, yeah, I know about that. Yeah. Yeah, and he and he taught it to the CIA. Fast. Yeah. Um, I am happy, but not without a lot of mental reconstruction in my mind, knowing that everything that we do is to know the perfection of ourselves as we are in our highest uh, order of who we are as a human. The human potential is thwarted by the narcissistic personality type and structures. Once you realize that you can unlearn that learned helplessness. They have oppressed you into believing you have this little peg around your, uh, around the rope, around the elephant foot. Once you realize what you actually are made of, uh, you'll get free. You know, it's very humbling when you understand it's a realm of fractals and math and music. We can only understand in metaphor. We can only understand in story, parable, but it resonates in you when you're on the side of light versus the side of dark. What I'm saying is this. When I realized through experiential experience, like a heightened, you know, spiritual experience, actually the mug I have, I have is like, I get to be me now. But anyway, let's go back to it. The heightened spiritual experience that I had there was like the, the poof, I've always been... I always will be. I'm connected to God. I'm not God. I'm God's spark. And that I was there at the beginning. And I will continue to be. This lifetime is but a snap of the finger. And that love, bliss, and joy, and that feeling of it, of that ease and content, and that enjoyment, that everything is okay, all right, right now. That is the only truth I need to know.